Victoria 3 has been out for a while now, and with the recent 1.2 update to the game, it's really gained a lot of replayability. Testament to that replayability is the fact that we'll be playing as Prussia today, and we'll be forming Super Germany, as it is called, where we get all of the German Empire borders, as well as all of Austria, diplomatically. So we're not doing it the warfare path, we're doing it the diplo path, and I'll show you exactly how that's done in a few moments. That means that by the time we get super germany we're gonna have almost no infamy and we're gonna have half of europe the strongest bits of europe under our control and ready to do a massive expansion so in my test runs i was actually able to do this in the first six to seven years but let's see i might try and do something a little bit different i gained a lot of experience from those test runs and i will try and apply that experience in today's run to form super germany as fast as possible afterwards if we get 10,000 likes on this video i'm gonna be forming the 1941 German Empire borders, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm saying I'm gonna conquer all of Europe in the next part of this campaign. You know, if you're interested in that, you might wanna leave a like, and hey, if you enjoy the content, you might wanna subscribe for more videos like these in the future. It would really encourage me, and I'm trying to restore the Roman Empire in real life, because that's what sane people do, right? Yeah, we, we need a billion subscribers for that, so why not be a part of that billion subscribers? Uh, that was a little bit of an awkward... So, starting off, the uh, Prussian market is fairly massive. It has basically all of Germany except the uh, Hanoverian areas, which uh, belong to the English. But due to some events that happened early on, Hanover is going to stop being a PU of Britain. And we're going to be able to confederate with Hanover later down the line. Well, we can actually confederate with them in the first two, three years if we're lucky. It's a little bit RNG based. Keep that in mind as well. This game in general has a lot of RNG component to it. So, always expect things to go differently. We're going to go to our technology and we're going to start researching nationalism as our first tech. Now, this is going to take 29 months, and it is going to allow us to start confederating with nations after we've gotten this research. With the recent update, you can also queue up technology, so keep that in mind and use it because it's actually a really great feature. You don't need to lose innovation whenever you're not researching something because you simply forgot about it. You can just shift and click on the technologies and queue them up. For example, I'm going to queue up canneries next because I want want to lead up to uh, mechanized workshops that's going to give me an extra 10 economy of scale. What this means is that whenever you have 10 of one particular factory in a single province, it's going to give you 10% extra resources created or manufactured from that particular factory or chain of factories, I guess. And I'm going to do something a little bit less orthodox compared to regular playthroughs. I'm going to queue up psychiatry as well, since psychiatry is going to give extra influence and influence is absolutely vital to this playthrough. In fact, I probably should queue up psychiatry first and then canneries afterwards. Guess the economy of scale can wait since we're going to get a massive amount of uh, income whenever we form Super Germany. Before we go into the economic part of this campaign, we're going to start off by ending the rivalry with Austria. Remember, we want to diplomatically get our Super Germany formed, so we must not be rivals with Austria. We're actually going to improve relations with them, and instead, we're going to rival whoever they rivaled. So let's check. Right now, they didn't rival anyone. Most likely, they will rival the Ottomans at some point so i might set the ottomans as my rival let's see let's go to our own diplomatic actions and see who we can get an alliance with right now i like how now you can see here the acceptance from each country as well as how close you are to becoming an ally with these countries russia is actually at minus 40 so if i improve with them a little bit they actually might get me the alliance that i want so i will be doing that my goal is to get russia as an ally maybe great britain or italy whenever it forms as an ally as well or even france Someone that's strong enough to back me up in the diplomatic play whenever I form Super Germany. Now that I think about it, probably France would be the best bet there. But um, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a little bit tough to get them as. Oh, well, you know what? I could just improve relations. They actually did not rival me. I thought France starts as a rival. They rivaled the British instead. Okay, that's fair. That's gonna make it a lot easier now. Take note. I'm also talking a little bit more in detail about every single uh, thing that I do here. So this video might end up being a little bit longer because I want you guys to follow along in case you want to do this yourself in your own playthroughs. It should be a little bit easier to follow through. Now we have 500 influence points because we canceled the rivalry with the Austrians. That's no bueno. We need a lot more influence points, so we need to rival other people. Seems like we can rival the Netherlands, and we can also rival Spain. Don't really care about the Spanish, don't really care about the Netherlands, so let's go ahead and rival both of those. That gave us an extra 400 influence points. That's gonna come in massive handy right now. Did I start improving with the Russians? Let's start improving with the Russians right now. We are improving with Russia, we're improving with Austria. I will not just 
just bankroll yet the Russians though because I only have 11,000 ducats so I'm gonna work on my ducats first or better yet pounds and then afterwards I'll start uh, bankrolling them after my economy is a little bit better let's say I am gonna be improving relations with Hanover I'm gonna improve relations with Saxony I'm gonna try and get the bigger states to confederate with me in North Germany making it a lot easier for me to uh, keep under control the rest of North Germany essentially and I think I can get an alliance with Bavaria oh no I cannot holy shit they actually hate my guts don't they they have a cautious attitude towards me all right well I'm gonna improve relations with you in that case Lippe is at risk of breaking the customs union with me oh that is no bueno boys let's see Lippe I can start bankrolling you you don't really cost much 0 0.18 that's almost nothing really so let's bankroll these bad boys and now let's switch over to the economic part of this campaign first off let's check what taxes we have we got liquor wine luxury furniture we're gonna add to this services services is always a really good tax to get because it always offers a lot of money and it doesn't completely destroy your standard of living compared to what other taxes do right porcelain is not a bad tax also since it's only a hundred and porcelain is something that usually the upper strata has as a basic need or demand rather than the lower strata so you're not getting as many radicals as you would from say putting a tax on grain which is the basic good that every single body needs in your country right let's go to our politics a little bit too. check our government we are boosting the evangelical church I'm gonna stop bolstering these guys that's giving me an extra 200 authority points back so I can use that right now industrially speaking we have quite a lot of manufacturers from the very beginning we also have a lot of uh, mines a lot of farms pretty much everything you can ever desire the Prussians can offer you but what we'll be doing is we're gonna go to our population and we're gonna check what the basic needs are for everybody here essentially you can imagine groceries are in high demand paper is in high demand and even though grain is a tiny bit expensive it's not extremely expensive so we're gonna overlook that for the time being another easier way to do this is just go to your market click on market price and then you see what's the most expensive thing essentially you want to make sure that you build up a few of these most expensive items whenever you see it here because you don't want to have this particular icon popping up the input goods shortage this is a problemo and we got to fix the problemo by building some shipyards which produce a man o wars until that we can also just import the man o wars from other countries to fix our shortage so we can uh, check this by productivity the Austrian market would uh, give the highest amount of uh, productivity or ducats or pounds so we're gonna set that up with the Austrians and now let's start up with our queue with the recent update we have both a private and a government construction queue so at the same time the private industry is building stuff whilst you're also building stuff so take advantage of the private industry as much as you can we do have a contested government also so let's reform the government here doesn't seem like we have many options for the time being we apparently don't have any shipyards to produce man of war so we're gonna queue up one shipyard over in uh, Pomerania to have our own domestic production of uh, man of wars and we're gonna make sure that it does produce military ships by contrast look at the amount of arms industry that Prussia is producing this is fairly accurate to be fair paper is in massive demand also so we're gonna queue up two paper mills in Brandenburg and we're also gonna be queuing up an admin building in Silesia alt click this bad boy so it goes at the top of the queue because Silesia actually starts with a taxation deficit you're getting 20% less tax from the state which is a big problem we're basically losing money we do not want to be losing money do we our construction method is the iron frame buildings and that means that it takes up iron fiber wood and tools so we got to build up a few of those we're gonna queue up one iron mine for the time being in uh, Westphalia and uh, three more logging camps over in uh, Prussian Anhal this should be enough for the time being we have eight buildings we'll keep on improving this and we're gonna get more afterwards what we are struggling with right now though is the construction sectors that we have only five construction sectors is not big so we're gonna build two more construction sectors alt click again in Brandenburg that means that this is gonna go up to the top of the queue and it's gonna make it so we actually build the rest of the buildings a lot faster afterwards one more thing I noticed is that in the late game the game is running so much more smoother now due to the fact that they've massively optimized how everything works in the game and how the populations uh, get assimilated in the later part we also got to fix up our legislation we don't really have anything amazing here I guess we could go for colonial resettlement but there's not much support for that same goes for the dedicated police force I would like to have this because the local police force gives the Junkers political strength and I don't want them to have political strength so I'm gonna try and go for this first if it works it works if it doesn't then I'm gonna be restructuring my government and I'm gonna try and get some other legislation that I really need such as better taxation laws better distribution of power we want to get a voting system 
system implemented as well as a home affairs implemented too now if we check the private sector they are not constructing anything but they did construct something a few moments ago didn't they they go they're about to fully fund a rye farm and they just funded it in silesia interesting the way the private sector works is it takes the money from the investment pool and it uses that investment pool money to build stuff in your country the higher your investment the more buildings the private sector will build up in your country all right we finished off our admin building in uh, silesia let's check if that's enough it is not we still need another one all right fair enough let's build one more admin building in silesia in that case boom alt click and check it out lipe absolutely love us because of the uh relations we gained from uh bankrolling them for a little bit of time king intervenes in the political process 20 percent enactment chance for a dedicated police force sounds gucci to me insufficient taxation in the north rhine province as well let's uh go ahead and build one admin building in here as well then but i'm not gonna prioritize this one because it's actually not that bad it's not giving me any actual taxation debuffed yet but it will in the future and don't forget we can also improve the amount of interest that we have declared i'm gonna declare a couple more interest in here in the balkan area because balkans do be important and we want to make sure that they're safe and free from uh outside influences right i mean it's our future land after all and as i was saying they did rival the ottomans let's see if we can also rival the ottomans yes we can declare rivalry they gave us some more diplo points i cannot sadly declare rivalry for the english myself because i have really good relations with them but i'm gonna get more influence points by declaring rivalry on other nations that i can declare rivalry on such as brazil 150 extra influence points and who else is there that i can declare my oh there you go two sicilies apparently i can declare my rivalry with that's an extra 200 influence so we got a lot of influence that we can use my boys rousing speech captivates the public awesome 15 enactment chance and 50 percent it still didn't go through pretty pepega not gonna lie but hey it is what it is now with the extra points you can see here hanover is no longer a subject of the british now in order to get them in our customs union we need a lot of work to be done so first off i think i'm gonna need to start bankrolling them yes sir so that's on the way i'm still improving relations with them i'm gonna try and get a defensive pact with them trade agreement and so on that will change once their attitude towards me changes right now it is cautious so give it a little bit of time always make sure that your influence points are being used in the german region or wherever you need it to be used in otherwise it's a waste of uh influence points really there you go we got a few defensive pact offers let's accept these and we can no longer improve relations with a few nations because it reached the maximum that you can improve with them so whenever that happens you get your influence back make sure you use that influence to improve with other countries obviously we're also going to be queuing up more iron let's say another uh, five iron mines in, in westphalia and i know i'm triggering a lot of use by saying iron but that's how you should really say this word okay truly that's how it that's that's how it is hey we got dedicated police force absolutely beautiful means that our yunkers are getting less influence as consequence and let's see what we have opened up now we got some home affairs i don't mind going for the secret police actually 26 percent endorsement is not bad either and only 11 opposition so we started this off with 19 percent pretty decent we're also going to improve the amount of construction sectors that we have by another three construction sectors bringing us up to 30 construction sectors or sorry 10 construction sectors one more thing i'm doing is i'm improving my education access as well as level two law enforcement and i'm also going to be setting up around my edicts i actually forgot to set my edicts before so that's on me really i'm going to first off get construction sector in uh westphalia so we're going to go for road maintenance because we got five iron mines being built here to improve uh the speed of that being built and i'm also going to set up around the country social mobility which offers education access and qualifications especially in the states where i have a lot of uh, industry going this is going to be of massive help and it's basically an easy way early on to improve the overall education of your population ottoman empire started a return state uh play against the egyptians Ooh, looks like they want to take back uh, adana the ottoman egyptian crisis we can declare an interest in arabia or i have no interest honestly i have no interest in that area so for the time being they can keep whatever they want there hey we can get a little bit of enactment success chance it's gonna give us some radicals though so keep that in mind it is what it is though you cannot make everybody happy that's for sure especially not in a game like uh vicky 3 try to keep a lookout on your trade routes once in a while because it can happen that you're gonna get massively unproductive trade routes which is what happened for me so i'm gonna get new trade routes now that are gonna be productive by comparison like the uh hardwood from the belgian and the piemontese market i was getting hardwood from another market that was more expensive totally not worth it same goes for the uh, iron here i'm gonna get this from wherever i get it cheaper as well as i'm gonna get it from countries that i have a strategic interest in because 
check it out due to the uh, iron import that I have from the Hanoverian market that increased the amount of trade volume between our countries so if we right click here we can see that the trade volume well I think it needs to update a little bit first but yeah there you see we get 16 relations from trade volume between our markets so the more trade routes I make with Hanover the higher the relations I get the easier it is to make them to bring them into the fold they go I can also absolve them of obligations now that's going to improve my relations with them by quite a bit and there you go it reset now we can actually get an alliance trade agreement and everything else with them beautiful let's get that alliance this should make it a little bit easier to uh, integrate them once we research nationalism of course my main ally target is still Russia but me getting an alliance and high relations with Hanover means that it's more likely that I'm gonna confederate with Hanover and then I can use that alliance slot to ally Russia afterwards it's really a matter of taking it step by step one at a time there's a little bit of a structure to everything that I'm doing here essentially time to queue up more wood manufactories or logging camps I'm gonna max out the ones in Anhalt I want to make sure that Anhalt uh, is my main lumber producing state for now I'm doing this because obviously I get throughput bonus from building in one province all of my uh, logging camps because of the economy of scale which of course improves once I get the uh, research that I was mentioning before namely the uh, mechanized workshops and then later down the line also shift work gives an extra 20 economy of scale meaning an extra potential 20% uh, throughput for my goods it's also high time that we set up at least one arts academy in uh, Brandenburg just in case we have some Austrian immigrants that have artistic spirit and of course more paper mills I'm gonna actually queue up four paper mills because paper is actually super expensive right now and I really need a lot more of it I'm also gonna be importing some paper to make up for the uh, paper that I do not have and I'm gonna do it from Hanover I'm also gonna do it from other markets I have an interest in such as the Russian market to get those relations up with the Russians and it's also high time that we improve with the French as well as we're gonna be uh, bankrolling Bavaria we don't want to lose the southern bit here just in case Austria also tries to make a play for the uh, diplomatic aspect of uh, this region and uh, booyah shoki my boys we got nationalism unlocked that means that we're now gonna start getting confederation events as well as we can launch a leadership play before that though I want to appoint uh, Bismarck as the Chancellor giving me 20% infamy decay I'm gonna get this uh, confederation with Lipe and we're also going to get the 15% Nakmin chance sure the main thing though is that we can go to Germany and then we can launch a leadership play this means we're gonna have to face the Austrians in open warfare but before I do that I'm actually gonna get my alliance with the uh, Russians in order to have a guaranteed ally against the Austrians and I'm also gonna try and get an alliance or to get the British on my side somehow so that means I'm gonna wait a little bit until we do start the leadership play that being said check out the amount of nations that support us already most nations are supporting us nobody is supporting Austria just yet and after we launch the leadership play everybody's gonna be supporting us including the Austrians once we improve relations with them we're also gonna be inviting to our customs union Hanover now since we have the relations for that and they accepted there you go we can actually confederate with Hanover and because we have the Alliance and we have all the other stuff with them we uh, have really high chance of that actually happening it is time to start bankrolling the russians now it's gonna tank our economy a little bit so you can improve your uh, economy by going to a uh, high taxation not to fear though our economy is perpetually increasing as we go along in this game and it looks like our second uh unification candidate is actually mecklenburg okay hey we just got one university in silesia beautiful thank you guys i like that event i hope that happens a lot more it's essentially free free buildings also gonna queue up some uh coal mines in the north rhine bit i'm gonna say seven coal mines for the time being and i also feel like i need more construction sectors it's about time so let's get an extra two more construction sectors for now alt click of course okay it's not hanover but we are confederating with saxony which is a pretty significant country since it's saxony it's got like what one million or something population here which is beautiful i'm wondering why i'm not able to incorporate state though it says cannot incorporate a colony whilst it's still growing i'm pretty sure saxony doesn't qualify as a colony and i really hope this is not a bug from the 1.2 uh, update and it's just because I don't have the rest of the country here the rest of the state otherwise this is going to be an actual massive issue for me and we also just got the secret police beautiful one more confederation with Saxe Weimar small little schnipple dupe state here you know I noticed with 1.2 I'm actually getting the confederation event a lot faster now than I was getting it before I'm curious if they increased the rate of this happening or what what's going on here but this is way way faster than before for real diplomatic play in North Germany annex Bremen Bremen revolution uh don't care about you guys to be honest right now Austria seems to be leaning
leaning on the side of Bremen. You know what? I'm gonna lean on the side of Bremen too. Let's see if they give me a good offer. <laughs> I'm gonna get this, uh... Oh! Defensive pack with Bavaria. Uh, do I want that? I already have really great relations with them. I guess I can get a defensive pack with them, sure. Alright, let's also side with Bremen. Us and Austria on the same side as good broskis here. This is actually giving us genial attitude because we're both fighting on the same side. You can see here, siding on the same conflict side gives a thousand relations, negating all the other previous bad relations we had. So that's just big brain siding with the Austrians on the same conflict. Doesn't matter what that conflict is. Oh, and it's it's actually all right. They they are going to war. Fair enough. Oh, confederate with Hanover. Hell yeah, my boys. Look at that, guys. Look at that. We actually got Hanover in a confederation, massively improving our uh, country size here. Now let's uh, get rid of Bremen or whatever rebels they got here. Boom, shakalaka. Take care of them, please. Take note, whenever you do have a lot of nations that you confederate with, you always have to change the production method for all your buildings. Make sure you standardize everything. Where even is Schwarzburg? Isn't this like, uh, isn't it like a company that makes hair products? Schwarzkurve or something like that? And we can also get a defensive pact with uh, Brunswick now, leading us closer to actually getting them in our customs union. There you go. That actually gave us the relations we needed. So we got plus three now, meaning we can invite them to the customs union, which also means that we'll be able to confederate with them too. And this colonial resettlement's not really going great, is it? Let's cancel this up. Let's go to our government and change up a few things in the government itself. We're going to restructure this. How about if we put the armed forces only? How is that going to make our country look like, oh, that is bad. That is, that is really bad. <laughs> oh, oh, nope. No, not going to have only one party. Thank you very much. Let's bring the Junkers in and the church. Let's bring the church in as well. Nothing ever went wrong from the church being in charge of stuff, right? Charity hospitals. That's not bad. That's definitely not bad. Mortality rate reduction. Pretty good too. Brunswick wants to join our customs union. Didn't I just invite you to my customs union? You are in my customs union. What the hell? Is the game getting like a delayed response time or something? Okay, that's just weird. They were in my customs union. Now they're not in my customs union. What? And we just got obligations with the Russians. We can cancel this up now then. And we can use that in the war for the uh, diplomatic play against Austria. What time of the day is it, you ask? Well, of course, it's time that we build some more construction sectors <laughs> in Brandenburg. And also, I started bankrolling uh, France. Hopefully, that's going to get me some obligations for the war against the Austrians. Otherwise, I can do the war against the Austrians without the French also. I just want it to be a little bit quicker than it otherwise would be. That's why I'm not rushing it either, because I just want to take my time, do this as peaceful as possible, like I promised at the beginning. And we're going to have the war path after we form Greater Germany. You know, it just occurred to me that it's actually a lot faster improving relations with nations by bankrolling them. I feel like this actually might be a little bit better than just regular improving relations, because it costs only 100 influence points compared to the 150 that actually improving relations costs. Plus, bankrolling is not that expensive with the small German nations, which don't have much of an economy anyway. Moment of truth. Let's see if we can actually integrate. Yes, we can incorporate. Okay. Ah, uh, I was a little bit worried there. So, I'm guessing this is a new change in 1.2. You need to have the entire state in order to make it a full incorporated state. So, yeah. There's that now. Let's start incorporating Mecklenburg. That means we've got to get the other two provinces here to incorporate uh, Saxony too. Steel is starting to get insanely expensive. So, let's build three factories in um, Westphalia. And also, the uh, requirements for steel, coal, and iron are also getting really expensive. So, I'm going to queue up an extra five of each of those in the provinces where we already have iron and uh, coal industries going on. You can always, of course, just uh, shift click and then that's going to instantly build or queue up five of them. We cannot go for colonial resettlement, but we'll try again. This time we'll go to colonial exploitation and we'll change it to resettlement later down the line. Better something than nothing, right? Let's go with the Schomburg Lippe. That's going to free up more of our influence points that we can use to bankroll another nation. Like I said earlier, guys, it can be super RNG. In my test runs, I actually got the uh, obligation with France and with the Russians by 39, so I'm a little bit behind on schedule here, but hopefully it's going to happen within the next few uh, months or years. Otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to attack the Austrians without the French, I guess. So, so queue up some more tooling workshops. I'm going to do it in West Prussia. Let's say nine tooling workshops in West Prussia because we don't really have much uh, of any industry going on in this part of the country, so we want to uniformly set up as much industry around everywhere as we possibly can. Finally, Brunswick entered our customs union earlier. I don't know what happened. Must have been a bug. They entered my customs union and instantly left the customs union. But with a little bit of uh, trade volume between our countries, they managed to rejoin it. So now I can actually confederate with them. And we also just got colonial exploitation, which means we can uh, we can have a little bit of fun around the world, let's say. Brunswick seems to be going into the fold too. Beautiful. Guys, take note. With the 
recent update, you cannot colonize South America anymore or Sulawesi because apparently the Dutch and the Argentinian slash Chileans have claims and interest in these lands. So that's preventing you from doing that. Pretty pepega. I mean, it's it's good for these nations, right? Because everybody usually just rushed for these lands, myself included. So I guess it's, uh, it's the devs way of uh, preventing people from actually colonizing, meaning that colonialization for Prussia is absolutely useless now and I wasted my time with this. So I'm going to cancel it now. <laughs> All right, boys, it's time to launch our diplomatic play. Go to cultures, Germany, launch diplomatic play and it's avec les stardius maximus because we have a lot of obligations with our neighbors. Most likely the Austrians will not even fight against us. Let's set up our troops by the border just to intimidate them even further and make them even more fearful of us as such, more likely to back down from this diplomatic play. We can call in our obligations with the French. That's going to bring them on our side. We can call in our obligation with the Russians. That's going to bring them also on our side. And right now, the Austrians are fearful, which means they very, very likely will back down from this. England declared neutrality. That's even better. That means the English are not going to help them out. What is this? Valdek? Oh, wow. Am I ever going to be able to do anything without Valdek? You know, I mean, come on. I'm going to offer obligations to Württemberg just so I can mount the amount of pressure on the Austrians. And heck, I'm even going to add war reparations on Austria and, and that's it. Nothing else. Now, let's see if they back down. There's like a pretty significant chance that they will back down from this. And they did. They backed down in our diplomatic play, yielding the primary goal to us, meaning we're the only country now that can form Germany. And uh, we got six, eight, nine supporter, ten supporters. We can already click the button and form Germany. But we want to wait for Austria to be one of the supporters in that uh, particular affair. And uh, in order to get that done, we have to continue to improve relations with them, bankroll them. So we're going to stop bankrolling the uh, French. We're also going to stop bankrolling everybody else that we were bankrolling before. And we're going to bankroll the Austrians later down the line whenever it's possible. And we also can change our name to the North German Federation now. We did not integrate these two small North German states because, well, that's just how RNG works. But not to fear, they're also going to be joining our empire since right now everybody is uh, supporting us with the exception of Luxembourg, Holstein, and the Austrians, all of which will support us fairly soon. Let's uh, help them out in their decision by bankrolling and improving relations with them. One thing that I'm going to do to improve my relations with Austrians, it's a little bit of a cheese, but I'm going to do every single import export that I can with them. That means quite literally every single one of these goods that I can import and export to Austria, I will do. That's going to give a massive amount of uh, relations, letting me bankroll them afterwards. The fires of industry are also massively kicking off, so we're going to actually help them out by uh, building more tooling workshops. We're going to build them in the established areas, of course, so we're going to build eight more in Hesse, two more in Rhineland, and another five in Hesse. Uh, tools are something you're going to need the entirety of the game. So the more you have them, the earlier, the better, in my opinion. There you go. Because of the volume of trade between us and Austria, we are able to bankroll them, which is going to give us an obligation. And we need that obligation. You'll see in a few moments why. Like I was saying, guys, massively RNG game. It took me five freaking years to get the uh, obligations with Austria. A lot longer than they normally take. By contrast, I got three obligations with Bavaria. And the same time, it got me to get one obligation with Austria. So if that's not RNG, I don't know what is, man. Anyway, now that we got that obligation, we can use it to reset our relations with the Austrians. And I think a good target for that is Wallachia. Or actually, instead of Wallachia, we could go for Oldenburg. Since Oldenburg's not voting for me, they randomly just changed their relations to wary. I don't know why. But we can do a quick uh, cheeky conquest against them. And we can uh, sway the Austrians by asking them, uh, by getting the obligations with them, essentially. That's also going to reset the relations with us if we use these obligations. So let's go ahead and uh, call in obligations. Buyashaka. Now instead of minus 200 or whatever they had, they have, let's wait for a second to reset. There you go. They got plus 797 and it means that uh, we can improve relations, get some treaties going with them. We need uh, influence points to get some treaties going. So let's do that. Let's cancel some of the other stuff we got going here. Like I'm going to stop bankrolling all of the southern uh, countries here. Absolve obligation too. There you go. Stop bankrolling because I need the influence points. And the first step with the Austrians is that we can get the trade agreement now, getting us one step closer towards getting genial relations with them now instead of uh, not genial relations. We had like cautious or something worse, actually. They hated us. They hated our guts. So look at that. Because of the fact that they got genial relations with us, we got 30 support. All right. Well, I absolved obligations. And look at this now. Code to cultures. Austria is supporting our play for 
becoming the uh, super Germany we always want it to be. Sadly, for some reason, Luxembourg and Holstein now do not support it, which is mega weird. I don't know why that freaking happened, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to form Germany now because there you go. 1848 and we already have super Germany in just 12 years after the start of the campaign. And realistically speaking, guys, you can get this way faster. Like I said, in my trial runs, I got it in seven, eight years, but it is RNG dependent on how fast you get the obligations in the specific order that we got them in this particular playthrough. But now we're going to manually get Holstein, Luxembourg and all these areas. And we're going to fix our economy because the next step, of course, is to conquer the rest of Europe. Once we get 10,000 likes, don't forget that you will notice once you uh, form that uh, your economy is going to massively tank. There's a reason for that. <laughs> if you go over here, you'll see that you have way too much on government wages and army. So we got to fix that. The way to fix it is, of course, set up the right production methods first and foremost. Wait, why can I not get baking powder? What do you mean I didn't invent baking powder? I got ba Did I not get baking powder? What? Oh, I'm researching it now. Never mind. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Let's set up all of the uh, right production methods that will fix a lot of our issues, to be fair. And guys, if you want to get the save, I'm going to make it available to all of my patrons and channel members. You'll find a link to all of that if you want to join up. And you can check for yourself how exactly this uh, particular save is going. First thing we got to do, of course, is uh, fix our bureaucracy. We have way too much bureaucracy. We can use some of this, of course, to advance some of these uh, institutions, but we still have way too much. We're going to use it and we're going to use it to integrate stuff. Because remember, once you form Super Germany, almost none of these states are integrated or incorporated. You have to incorporate them. That's why you're losing 200,000 because you're not getting any taxes from these newly conquered areas. Once you start getting the taxes from the newly conquered areas, that's when you're actually making bank. So your economy will tank for a while, but it's going to go back up right afterwards. Just give it a little bit of time. It is the natural process of how these things go. But don't make the mistake of deleting your admin buildings or anything like that. Use the admin points. You need that stuff to core up. If anything, you can reduce the amount of barracks that you have because truth be told, you do have a lot of barracks. You're not going to need that many barracks also. And finally, we also got baking powder, which means our economy will skyrocket. Baking powder is, of course, the second best powder right after sugar. The first one, sugar. You thought I'm going to say something else, didn't you? Another thing we got to fix now is our diplomacy. So we got a lot of uh, extra influence here and we didn't get Luxembourg and Holstein. So I actually kind of want to annex Holstein and Luxembourg. Let's see. These guys are a PU of the Netherlands. Right. Okay. These guys are a PU of... Oh, this is so ugly. I got Schleswig, but I don't have Holstein. Ugh. Yeah, these guys, these guys need to go. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to attack Denmark. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Denmark, but I got to... You got you to gotta give me a stuff. going to make you a puppet, I think. That's probably the best play here. And I'm going to set both of these as my primary objectives. I spend an extra 10 maneuver points. Totally worth it, because this way, if they back down, they become my puppet, and they also have have to give me the province of Holstein. If we're a little bit lucky, nobody joins on their side also and they're going to be fearful, which means they're going to back out and we don't need to go to war with them actually. To help with that, we could also say uh, give obligation to the English. I don't think we need to, but screw it. I'm just doing it just to give a little bit of an extra oomph to the Danes, make him come on our side. Wait, really? Did they actually not cave? No way, Denmark. Are they actually fighting me? Bro, these guys have bowls. Hot damn, they got bowls. Wow. All right, well, I'm gonna crush those bowls, but it is what it is. Our government is also a little bit better than it was at the start. We quite literally have the opposite of what we started with, politically speaking, in charge of our country. That's a good thing, by the way. Now we got no migration control. We got professional army, quite a lot of good legislation. I'd love to go for guaranteed liberties, but it is not a part of our choices right now. I also want to change from interventionalism to laissez-faire, which gives up to 75% private construction allocation, minus 25% loan interest rate, and so on. It is absolutely amazing. I love laissez-faire, and it's definitely the best uh, economic policy that we could have right now, at least. You're probably noticing how quickly our economy is turning. Look at our budget here. You can see from 1936, we had a massive dip once we formed Super Germany, but now it's going up, and it's going to get even stronger as we go along in the campaign. Total income right now, 600 152. We're going to start lowering that slowly so we can go back to normal taxation, which in turn means our standard of living increases. There's more money into the investment pool going.
going and so on. And our economy also increases a lot because every single month our incorporating states get more taxes. So look at that 0.37 land tax, 0.75 per capita tax. And it goes up every single week that this goes more towards 100% integration. Actually, I need to do that with the rest of the states. I just forgot that uh, I didn't switch over to standardized filing system, which means I can do more fully integrated states in the North Italian bits, which I have not done yet. And in Transylvania and Vulala, we got the puppet in uh, Denmark. Wait, what? Why did Schleswig-Holstein not- What? I thought I'm gonna get Schleswig-Holstein. That was my primary goal. Whoa, that is just disgusting then. And I guess it doesn't really- You don't really notice it, do you? But still, that's not nice. Let's check our GDP. I forgot to check this. So we're second after Great Ching, and we're gonna get first very, very soon. Third after us is the Brits, East India Company, Russia, and so on. I have to say also with the 1.2 AI, the, the AI is actually significantly better at managing its economy. So it's definitely a lot of improvement in that particular regard. I think I also want to make Switzerland my little puppet. I don't have much infamy because remember I did diplomatically form Super Germany so my infamy is 23. That is just insane how low that is man. Actually I should probably puppet the Netherlands right because the Netherlands also has uh, the Dutch East Indies. So yeah let's do that in fact. Look at how many private constructions we also have at the same time now. It's not one or two anymore. We got six private constructions being built at the same time. Just look at the amount of units we also have. I got to recruit generals for all of these bad boys because it's just way too many soldiers man holy mother of god yeah i also need more admin buildings that's for sure so let's queue up a few more admin buildings to keep up with the bureaucracy spendings wow only three percent of our government endorses restricting child labor what's going on with our people bro we gotta we gotta restrict the schnapps you know it's no bueno for everybody just check out how fast we're snowballing now since we unified super germany in just two years we went from 650 at max taxation to 960 and and that's two years in which we had to fix our economy first. And then after we fixed the economy because it was massively hemorrhaging everything. We haven't even incorporated everything yet. And we're still in the process of getting everything regulated. But just to put it into perspective, it's absolutely glorious and insanely overpowered. Super Germany is definitely the meta here. I wish there was an achievement for that. Actually, is there any achievement for Super Germany? Possible. Berlin Conference started as Prussia formed Germany own at least 10 states in Africa. Okay, so there isn't any actual achievement for forming Super Germany. But I guess we could in this playthrough get 10 states in Africa by going colonial. I'm gonna have to change my uh, research queue in that case. Also, I want to conquer Romania and the Balkans because that's just everybody knows that's proper German clay. It always has been. Looks like wood is getting expensive. What? Really? Let me uh, get my new declared interest first off. So I'm gonna go with the Ottoman Empire, the Ukrainian part, less rest of France. Maybe I'm gonna get some Spanish interest, North African, Egypt interest. I actually don't know what interest I should go for. I'm just getting everything that I can get. Screw it. Wow, I actually can get a lot of interest. What? How am I able to get so many interests, man? <laughs> what? Why am I able to get so many interests? Holy mother of God. It's like all of Europe. It's like all of Europe. Hey, we managed to get restricted child labor. Beauty fleur. Now let's check whether the legislation we can get here that would benefit our country. Maybe universal suffrage, but it doesn't seem to be available for the time being. Properly tied women. Uh, no, we'll keep it like that. That's that's pretty good. And that's about it. I guess proportional taxation would be awesome, but we still don't have that available. I think I actually need to get some more technology researched on the political side. I've been focusing on the economic tab, on the production tab, more than uh, the society tap to be fair to get a strong economy going right and speaking of strong economy we got a hundred thousand right now and we're not even uh, producing at our full capacity so let's uh, do that let's uh, start building more construction sectors let's build up another let's max out the ones in austria state that way should be able to use up all of this money to build more buildings that's what you're supposed to do if you got money on the positive in vicky 3 you're playing the game wrong clearly next up i'm gonna get identification documents because i need the new taxation policies uh i'm also gonna queue up human rights and pan-nationalism because everybody knows pan-nationalism and human rights go hand in hand right looks like fine arts are super expensive let's build more art buildings in that case boys oh austria's got already a few of them holy snaps they got so many art academies you would imagine they have enough space for everybody that wants to be an artist right all right we're gonna do a cheeky war here against the uh dutch i'm gonna try and make the netherlands my puppet and conquer luxembourg at the same time in the same war i called in my two best friendos here uh france and russia 
and apparently Belgium's declaring neutrality because that's what they best do, right? Let's go ahead. It looks like they want to fight the war because they're not wussies like other countries are and our French are fighting the war for us, okay? This is totally historical, guys. If your history teacher asks you when, which war did the French and the Prussians fight together on the same side, clearly that would be the uh, war against the uh, aggression of the Netherlands. And I still need more construction sectors because I'm just woozing a lot of economy right now. Holy schnapple, dude, bro. I am just rich as schnapps. Let me make sure I alt queue that because I don't think I alt queued it. Look at our boys crush their spirits completely, my boy. I think I need to also enact more legislation, don't I? Let's see what politics I have that I need changing. Don't have anything that I really want to be fair. Social security? Should we give our people social welfare? Nah. Damn, it's like I'm LARPing the US government, bro. Or any government for that matter. Oh my lord, look at my brand new pupetus. There you go. My pupetus is the Netherlandus. I also noticed there's an issue. I, I had conquest of Luxembourg as my goal, but it didn't give me Luxembourg. So I feel like that's a bug. Also, um, I did get the puppet of the East Indies or West Indies because they were the puppet of the Netherlands before. So there's that. It means that I now have a huge amount of um, exotic resources that I can get for myself. And it also means I can probably start colonizing this if I actually had a colonial affairs, which I don't have because I canceled them. Anyway, the point is that it is insanely fun. It's insanely strong. And I am absolutely killing the schnapps out of everybody. Look at this. One million already on high taxation without even trying. And I literally have been building as many construction sectors as possible and still on 100,000 plus, dude. Look at that. Seriously. From 1836 to 1856, look at our economy having skyrocketed after we unified. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the schnapple dupe and I'm gonna make freaking 50 construction sectors. If 50 construction sectors is not enough, I don't know what is, bro. But I do think that this video is carrying on for quite a while. I did achieve what I wanted to achieve in the first bit, which is Super Germany by what? 1848? Yeah, 1848. Next step, of course, conquer the rest of Europe once we get those 10,000 likes. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the style because I really want you guys to see a little bit more of what happens instead of me just editing everything out. I mean, of course, this is still going to be a few hours edited into like 30 minutes or something. But the point is that I'm leaving a lot more information that a lot of people would find boring, I guess. But hopefully it is useful. And hey, until the next time, check out this awesome Japan run. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. 